Banning TikTok. Sounds good, right? I hate TikTok. I won't have it. It's not allowed in my home. Wife doesn't have it. Kids don't have it. It is Chinese spyware. So banning it for a nation is a good idea. And when I saw they were going to ban TikTok here, or talking about banning TikTok here, I thought to myself, okay, well, that might be good. And then something started happening out there. I started to see a lot of bipartisan support for it. Now, let me ask you something. I don't know how old you happen to be. I'm 41 years old. I remember many pieces of bipartisan legislation passing in my 41 years on this planet. I've never seen one of them that was actually good for the country. So I started getting nervous. Then I started paying attention to the things Greg Price was saying out there, and now I'm officially mega nervous. Joining me now, my buddy Greg Price, Communications Director for the State Freedom Caucus Network. Hey, Greg, why don't you want to ban TikTok? What are you, some kind of communist? <laughs> Thanks for having me, Jesse. Um, no, the thing about it is you have to look at these things through the sense of the ulterior motives people may have for wanting to ban this app. And, you know, obviously it's bad that one of the most popular apps in America is, you know, the, the, its parent company is in bed with the Chinese Communist Party. But here's the thing. Almost every social media app that we use is in bed with a hostile foreign power. All social media has negative corrosive effects on America's children in the way that people have said that TikToks does. And yet Congress is singling out TikTok and they're not doing it because they give a damn about Chinese surveillance. They're doing it because they have ulterior motives. And if you look at the bill that they are, that is on the table in the United States Senate and has 21 co-sponsors, bipartisan, it is fully insane. They want to create what is essentially a new Patriot Act for the internet. What it does is it gives the Commerce Department the power to appoint a secretary that basically has a broad mandate to go after anybody doing something on the internet that they deem is a national security threat. And so the bill goes through all of these things that they have the power to do. Literally, if they think that you are a threat, they can get everything that you own that has access to the internet from your computer to your cell phone, all the way down to like your video game console and your and, and your the ring camera on your door. It is absolutely insane. And on top of that, they specify in the bill that the things that this new secretary of communication can do is not subjected to FOIA lawsuits. So they can say that you're a national security threat. They can put you in jail and seize your property and you're not allowed to even know why. The bill is insane. And like I said, it has 21 co-sponsors include, you know, and it basically runs the table of the worst of the worst of the DC Uniparty, everybody from Tom Tillis to Mark Warner, who's the person who wrote it. And the thing I said earlier about ulterior motives, these people want to infuse the people's fears about Chinese surveillance with TikTok in order to increase their power over our lives. If it was truly just about banning TikTok, the bill would have one sentence that TikTok is now banned. And on the flip side, you have to look at this from the sense also of how Meta has spent millions and millions of dollars over the last year lobbying Congress to ban TikTok. And it's not because Mark Zuckerberg cares about Chinese surveillance. It's because TikTok's their biggest competitor. And all of these members of Congress also own millions of dollars worth of stock in Meta and set to get rich if it's banned. And again, it's not to say that TikTok shouldn't be banned. It's just to say that these people do not have our best interests at heart at the end of the day. The devil is always in the details. You can always count on Tom Tillis screwing the pooch somehow. That's what this guy seems to do for a living. Okay, I'm scared to even ask, Greg, is it going to go through? Again, it has 21 co-sponsors, some of you know the most power, powerful people in the Senate. I really hope it doesn't go through, but it will probably pass with bipartisan support, and both parties will hail it as a champion of bipartisanship, and it will go to show that, the, that at the end of the day, the worst things that happen in D.C. are bipartisan. Bipartisan is never a good thing. It's usually bills that increase the government's power over our lives. And, you know, and obviously we hope that Kevin McCarthy has it dead on arrival in the House. And it shouldn't be confused with other efforts in the House to ban TikTok because this is just one bill in the Senate. There are other efforts on the table. But, but yeah, let's hope Kevin McCarthy doesn't bring it up in, in the House at all. Well, let's hope. All right. Well, the, the D.C. low T G O P is doing what it all, has always done, disappointing us. Let's deal with state houses, because this is really our true fight. The federal government is pretty much lost, but we have so much we can save at the state level. Low T G O P at the state level, Greg, you are out there digging into this problem. How big of a problem is it? Because I see red states being pathetic all the time. 
It's a major problem, and it's one that doesn't get nearly enough attention because what happens because national politics gets all the attention. Take a look at the school boards issue, Jesse, and how people have been paying attention more to school boards over the last three years. Why didn't people do it before? It's because there was no coverage of it. People simply were not paying attention to what was happening in their own backyards. The same thing is happening in state legislatures, and especially with red state GOPs. Some of the most ruby red states have some of the worst representation. I'll give you just a few examples. In the last legislative session in Wyoming, Wyoming, which is the state that Donald Trump won by a larger percentage than any other, their Speaker of the House blocked bills for universal school choice, a Florida-style parental rights and education bill, and a bill to ban child mutilation for minors. He blocked all three of those bills in the most Republican state in America that were supported by majorities of his caucus. I'll give you another example. South Carolina just had a huge, just did their whole debate over their budget. The, Fr- the Freedom Caucus in South Carolina tried to uh, put in an amendment that would have defunded the DEI programs at every university in South Carolina. And the supermajority Republican legislature voted against it. You can go state by state by state, and it's a major, major problem. And that's why, the st- that's why the State Freedom Caucus Network began three years ago. What we're doing is we're taking the House Freedom Caucus and building it in states all over America because the same problems with the na- that we complain about all the time with the national GOP, there are problems on a much larger scale in the states, and it doesn't get nearly the attention that it should. Greg, I want to focus, now all that's really horrible, but I want to focus on this piece of trash in Wyoming for a moment. When is he up for re-election, and what do you need me to do to make sure that guy's political career is over? Raise your voice about it, Jesse. That's all, it's the, you know, it's the same, that they coincide with the federal elections in, in uh, I'm pretty sure in Wyoming. I could be wrong, but I think, okay. I think that's what it is. And so, yeah, we need to ensure okay. this guy, at the very least, is not the speaker again. It is, it's truly terrible. And, you know, the, the other point I want to make is, like, the stuff that comes out of your state legislatures affects your life in a much greater way than things that come out of D.C. on any given day. The Inflation Reduction Act, quote unquote, was a terrible law that's going to do terrible things. But you're not going to feel the effects of that as much as, you know, your state legislature that allows child mutilation to keep being legal. This stuff is very important and it gets ne- not nearly the amount of attention it should. And we need to start paying attention to it. And that's why I joined the State Freedom Caucus Network to get involved in all these local issues. Support the first TV today and get instant access to exclusive specials like Who is Ron DeSantis? The History of FBI Scandals and America's Worst Presidents. Visit thefirsttv.com slash support or download the First TV app to become a supporter and start watching today.